Hi guys, Harry here. Welcome to Scrap Science. What we're going to be doing today is something for a future video and in that future video we're going to need manganese metal. So what I've got planned is we're going to try to convert uh, this manganese sulfate which I bought online. Uh, we're going to try to convert that into metallic manganese. The normal way that most people would make manganese metal is to do it by a thermite reaction, uh, usually with manganese dioxide and aluminium powder. It's a relatively easy thermite reaction as far as thermite reactions go. There's a ton of good information on that reaction online, but for now I don't really have the setup or the aluminium powder uh, for actually setting up that reaction, so we'll stay away from that. Now given that thermite isn't an option for us, we don't actually have all that many alternatives for reducing uh, the manganese 2 plus that's in the manganese sulfate here into uh, metallic manganese. The only alternative that we're actually left with, uh, aside from just buying the manganese metal directly, uh, which wouldn't be any fun, is the industrial process that they use uh, to generate manganese metal and that is the electrolytic reduction of the manganese ions in our manganese sulfate. Just by the way before we start the reason I'm using uh, manganese sulfate as a starting material is uh, one because it's cheap definitely cheaper than manganese metal and uh, it can actually be made from manganese dioxide which is even cheaper and you can even get it from uh, those big lantern batteries zinc carbon batteries. Uh, Nerd Rage has a video on that uh, so I thought manganese sulfate seemed like a good place to start. Now you might think that electrolytically reducing uh, the manganese sulfate into manganese metal is as easy as just electrolyzing a solution of manganese sulfate but we have a couple of things working against us in that case. Uh, the first one is the fact that the manganese ions will react on the anode uh, and oxidize to form manganese dioxide, which is not our desired product at all. Uh, we want to reduce the manganese rather than oxidize it. And then despite the fact that you would expect uh, reduction of manganese ions to occur on the cathode, uh, the reduction potential of manganese is actually a lot lower than just regular water, uh, water reducing into hydrogen gas. In fact, it's much more favorable for on the cathode of an electrolytic cell with a manganese sulfate electrolyte uh, to simply reduce water into hydrogen gas instead of making any manganese metal. We'd pretty much generate nothing, I'd expect, if we did it like that. That gap between the reduction potentials of water and the manganese 2 plus to manganese metal is actually quite a big problem that's quite tricky to overcome. We'll really need to work hard to optimize uh, the reaction of manganese 2 plus to manganese metal in order to actually generate some. And that's going to be a little bit tricky, but we've got a few tricks that we can employ uh, in order to favor that reaction as much as we can. Our first and pretty much only trick we're going to be using to optimize the reaction is to run the electrolysis. Uh, instead of simple electrolysis, we'll be running it instead as uh, a split cell. You've seen me do this kind of thing before. We use uh, a clay pot as an electrolytic diaphragm which can separate uh, the reactions that occur on the anode of our electrolytic cell and the cathode of our cell. Now this is going to help us for two main reasons. Uh, first of all, it will allow us to just put our manganese sulfate into the compartment of our cell which has the cathode in it. So the only thing we can do with our manganese ions is reduce them into metal. Uh, it avoids having the manganese ions close to the anode where they would uh, oxidize into manganese dioxide, which is something we don't actually want in this synthesis. The second thing that using a split cell will help us with, uh, definitely the most important thing it'll help us with, is the fact that it will avoid performing the electrolysis in acidic conditions. So if we just used a single cell for the electrolytic cell uh, and we did manage to plate out manganese onto the cathode, on the anode generating oxygen and manganese dioxide uh, will have a byproduct of generating hydrogen ions which will acidify the solution and that will possibly redissolve our manganese metal and it will push the reduction potential of water or hydrogen uh, into 
much higher regions, making it much, much, much more difficult uh, to plate out our manganese metal. So if we have a look at the reduction potentials for water, you'll see that for H plus or acidic conditions, uh, the reduction potential is 0, 0.000 volts, that's the definition. And in basic or neutral conditions, it's actually much lower, it's something like minus 0.83 or something, I don't really remember. It'll be on screen now. So again, by using a split cell, it can separate uh, where we form the acid in the anode compartment and separate that from where we actually want to be reducing our manganese ions uh, in the cathode chamber, where we can leave that solution uh, relatively neutral. It would be much better to run it in basic conditions, but adding sodium hydroxide or sodium carbonate to our manganese sulfate electrolyte uh, would cause manganese carbonate or manganese hydroxide to precipitate out because neither of them are soluble in water. Honestly, the cathode compartment will probably become a little bit basic over time as we generate hydrogen as a byproduct of our manganese reduction. Uh, but hopefully it'll be relatively minor and only a little bit of manganese hydroxide will precipitate out. And even then, we could add a little bit of sulfuric acid to our cathode compartment just to react with any manganese hydroxide that precipitates out. But we'll get to that later. Basically, our split cell will stop us from generating our unwanted byproduct of manganese dioxide and allow us to run our reduction in neutral or slightly basic conditions, which should help us along significantly. Basically, what we need to do is have our cathode in the clay pot here with our manganese sulfate electrolyte and our anode out here in maybe just a sulfuric acid electrolyte in order to make it nice and conductive. There are a couple of other things, little things that we can do in order to boost the reaction uh, somewhat. First is to use a cathode which has a very high hydrogen over potential. Uh, this will push the reduction potential of water into even more negative regions. Uh, and for that, what I thought was the best uh, option was aluminium. Uh, I don't have any aluminium sheet which is a little bit disappointing, so I have to use aluminium foil, which is far from ideal, but it should do the trick. Hopefully that will allow yeah, the reduction potential of manganese uh, to be a little bit more favored once again. And that brings us to the final thing we can do uh, to increase the chance of this reaction working, and that is to make our solution of manganese sulfate as concentrated as possible uh, to bring the reduction potential of manganese uh, up a little bit. So anyway, I'll go ahead and get our cell and all of our solutions ready and we will get started. Just adding the manganese solution to the cell, you can see here uh, the nice pink colour of our manganese sulphate. And now if we go ahead and connect up our electrodes, uh, we should be ready to go for plating out our manganese. And turning on the cell, we should see current start flowing. Anyway, turning up the voltage uh, lets us put a little bit more current through our cell. So you can see if I move that wire out of the way, we're getting about a quarter of an amp through the cell at 11.4 volts. Uh, sadly, it doesn't look like we're generating any manganese metal on the cathode. I might zoom in a little bit there. Um, it seems to be just generating hydrogen gas, but we will continue to watch that over the next... Uh, ages I guess and see if we do manage to get any manganese metal plating onto the cathode at all. Alrighty we are 10 minutes into running the cell. The current uh, very luckily has risen dramatically. We're now running over an amp through the cell which is good. A higher current density uh, further favours the production of manganese metal. So what I'm going to do now is just take out the cathode and we'll have a quick look and see how well we've done. Yep, so have a look here. It's a little tricky to see, but there are little specks of black all over our cathode, which can only be the production of manganese metal, which is exactly what we want. While we do have significant byproduct of hydrogen forming, we are forming manganese metal on our cathode here. So I'm going to leave the cell running for possibly a whole day, I reckon and we'll see just how much manganese we can get out. There's around about five, six, seven grams of manganese metal 
waiting in solution to be reduced to the metal uh, so hopefully uh, we'll be able to get out a significant portion of that anyway I'll get back to you tomorrow provided nothing catastrophic occurs um, and hopefully we'll have a bunch of manganese metal formed nearly 24 hours in uh, I've left the cell running overnight and everything seems to have gone swimmingly um, it's worked incredibly well much better than I thought it would have uh, you can see if I bring the electrode out now um, the cathode here is covered in a whole bunch of what can only be manganese metal uh, so what I think we'll do is shut down the cell I'll see if I can scrape off as much of that as I can and we'll do a quick test uh, to tell whether or not it is actually manganese metal or whether it's just manganese dioxide but I'm pretty certain that uh, the stuff we're forming on a cathode surface should definitely be manganese metal. As a side note I've also uh, overnight put in a graphite cathode uh, in alongside our aluminium. Aluminium really isn't the best choice for a cathode despite the fact that um, the hydrogen over potential is nice and high and it should favour the manganese production. Um, the real point of this experiment is to see whether or not I could plate manganese metal onto a graphite rod in order to make a makeshift manganese electrode which seems to have worked very well. I'll get that out and you can see a whole bunch of manganese has plated onto the cathode there which is excellent. But We'll take those out, I'll see if I can extract some of that manganese off them and we'll go from there. Just as a quick test, I have some small chunks of what we think is manganese uh, that formed on the cathode here. And I have sulfuric acid in this beaker here, uh, very dilute. Now, if this is manganese metal, uh, when we drop it into the beaker, we should see that it reacts and bubbles with hydrogen gas. Whereas if we've just made manganese dioxide, uh, there should be pretty much no reaction. So let's drop that in. And you can see we definitely get a reaction there. So excellent. We do have uh, what can only be manganese metal. Now the stuff that formed on the aluminium cathode was uh, really not very good quality. Um, there wasn't really much of it either. But after putting in the graphite electrode as the cathode, I think... Uh, the graphite is a much better choice as a cathode because uh, you can see here we have a whole bunch of manganese metal on this electrode which looks quite cool. The reason it looks black uh, rather than being a nice shiny metal is because uh, alongside with hydrogen forming on the cathode uh, along with the manganese it causes the manganese to form not in uh, like a pure sheet but as tiny little crystals like you can see uh, big ones growing off the cathode down here and up here a little bit uh, but it occurs on the microscopic scale as well so it messes up the reflective properties of the metal and makes it kind of look dull and black like this but we do still have manganese metal here uh, it just looks a little bit dodgy. Anyway, that is oxidizing quite quickly. You can see a little bit of brown starting to form. Uh, yeah, around about there. So I might scrape off that manganese and store it uh, under a little bit of mineral oil. And look at that. Big chunks of manganese metal. Excellent. This worked far better than I thought it would. And that's a little over two and a half grams worth of manganese that we got out of that, which is pretty good, I think. And there we are, after storing it, um, I realized that, you can see here, the mineral oil that I'm using uh, must be slightly wet or something, because you can see the manganese is probably reacting with a little bit of the water in there, uh, bubbling hydrogen gas out the top. Um, but that's all right. 
I've stored um, half of it in there because I expect that to oxidize seeing as there's water in the mineral oil there and half of it just under air here which should last a fair while. Um, maybe I'll get some dry mineral oil at some stage and put it over this. But there we are, two and a half grams all up of manganese metal. Should probably leave that lid off there. Anyway, it turns out that um, the stuff we generated on the aluminium cathode um, was really quite poor quality and we really didn't generate much on the aluminium cathode. Um, aluminium really wasn't the best choice. I should have um, predicted that, but the stuff we made on the graphite cathode, this stuff is much higher quality. It's conductive, it reacts with sulfuric acid very vigorously, um, and it's obviously manganese metal. So if you try this yourself, make sure you use a carbon graphite cathode and it seems to do well. I think I'll go ahead and leave it there. Uh, in my own time, I will scale up this uh, reaction and try to generate a whole bunch of manganese uh, from this whole 80 grams worth of manganese sulfate that I have left. So you should be able to look forward to, um, in the future, we'll be using an electrode like the manganese on carbon electrode that we made earlier today for the generation of potassium permanganate, which will be very cool, hopefully. So till then, see you later.